So hello and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are going to be talking May favorites and fails. Um, but before we get into it, thank you guys so much for your support and understanding. Last week, my daughter had surgery, so I didn't post. For those of you that don't know, my four-year-old daughter had surgery last week, and without going into the details of her personal health, the surgery was a success. So no complications. Um, everything went smoothly, but we have to wait eight to 10 weeks to see if it worked. So we're just continuing to stay positive and hope that everything looks good in eight to 10 weeks. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get right into today's video. First up is a new vitamin C that I've been loving. You guys know I'm very loyal to Timeless vitamin C, but I've been using it for so long. I just wanted to try something else and I really have been enjoying this. This is the Naturium Vitamin C Complex Serum. A couple things I noticed right off the bat is that it has opaque packaging and an airless pump. So those are two things that I always look for with vitamin C because as you guys know, vitamin C is a very complicated ingredient to keep shelf stable. And those two things are very important in keeping it stable. This has two types of vitamin C, hyaluronic acid and vitamin E. Unlike like the SkinCeuticals or the Timeless, it does not have ferulic acid, which is known to be a great stabilizer for vitamin C, but it does have gold, which is also a stabilizer. But most importantly, I look forward to putting this on in the morning, and I feel like the best skincare is the skincare that you're gonna use. So even if you have the best skincare in the world, if you don't look forward to using it and you're not consistent with it, it's not gonna work. This has like this watery consistency, and it feels like a hyaluronic acid. It's very thin in consistency feels very hydrating. I love putting it on. It feels very luxurious. One thing I learned within the last couple of years is that a lot of people think vitamin C is just for like brightening dark spots on your face and evening out your texture, which it can do depending on what's causing the dark spots on your face. But most importantly, vitamin C is a great antioxidant and antioxidants on your skin protect it from things that sunscreen's not protecting it from environmental factors, pollution. Your sunscreen is just tackling the UVA, UVB rays. This helps tackle the rest of the stuff your skin needs protection from. So that kind of changed the way that I thought about vitamin C, which was like this optional product. And if I wasn't seeing the brightness, then I would stop using it versus a second layer of protection for my skin. All right, next up is the Pacifica Vegan Collagen Recovery Eye Cream. This is close to $20, so it's not cheap. Um, and I was really excited to try it because I'm all about uh, some collagen around my eyes and getting the crow's feet and nothing wrong with that, but would love to age gracefully. It has kind of a lotion-y consistency. When I first felt it, I was like, ooh, this feels very promising. But when I applied it to my under eyes, it sort of is one of those lotions that feels like it just sits on top of your skin and doesn't get soaked into your skin. Unlike you guys know, I love the Belief Beauty Eye Balm. That's like one of my high-end splurge items. That one feels super rich and moisturizing like this one, but then it feels like your skin really accepts it, whereas this one sort of feels like it's sitting on top. And number two, if you get this in your eyes, at least for me, it really burns. And for a product formulated to be put in the eye area, I feel like it shouldn't burn if you accidentally get a little bit in your eye because even if you don't get it in while you're applying it, you may rub your eyes throughout the night. Um, it's just very possible for it to get into your eyes and I feel like that's something that's kind of unacceptable for an eye cream. If you're looking for a good drugstore eye cream to try, I would definitely go like Elf Holy Hydration over this one. It's more cost effective and I think it's better. All right, next up is probably my favorite product in this video. When I was doing my research for the drugstore products celebrities actually use, this was one of the ones that I found, but I didn't have time before that video to test it out and give you feedback on it. So I didn't include it, but I bought it and I used it and now I'm giving you my feedback on it. And it's the EOS Shea Butter 24 Hour Moisture Shave Cream comes in like this hot pink bottle. It's pomegranate raspberry scented and it's a protective shea butter formula you can use on wet skin or on dry skin and it comes out like a lotion. It's not a foaming shave gel. And this was a product that I found in my research that Selena Gomez swears by. Of course, I'm like, I gotta try it. And I am so glad that I did. If you know me, you know I am so prone to razor burn. I feel like I've tried every razor on the market and no matter what, I get razor burn. And for a long time, I was using the Tree Hut Shave Oil, which helped. This one is even better at protecting your skin. A couple things I just want to note that when I first tried it, I was like, mm, I don't know about this. Number one, you need quite a few pumps to cover your whole leg. I have long legs, so it's not like one pump and done. I needed a few pumps. Number two, like I said, this goes on like a lotion. It feels like a lotion, it looks like a lotion. And you know those shave gels where you shave, you do like one swipe of your whole leg, you kind of rinse it off in the shower, and then you do your next swipe. 
this is not one of those products because it's not a foaming shave gel that's just gonna fall right off of the razor. It's kind of stuck to your razor. So you gotta like really rinse it out, bang it against the wall, rinse it out, bang it against the wall, and then do the next swipe, which is very annoying. And when I was first using it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so frustrating. I am not gonna use this again. But the result was worth it. Like, I feel like the fact that it's so stuck to the razor is the reason it works on your skin because it really adheres to your skin and truly protects it. Even though it takes me longer to shave with this, I get a smoother shave and I do not get razor burn, which is two things I haven't had in a really long time at this level. Probably my favorite find of the whole month. Mm, I don't know because I'm looking at the next favorite. Tide. It's a Tide favorite. But before we go to another favorite, let's talk a fail. And this is the Derma E Essentials Sun Protection Mineral Powder. Huge disclaimer here that a powder or a spray is not sufficient sunscreen. You wanna use a lotion, you wanna use a, quite a bit of a lotion to give you the protection you need. In an ideal world, you would reapply that lotion every two hours the entire day. But we don't live in a perfect world. When I'm just wearing a tinted sunscreen, which most days that's all I'm wearing, I will just put that sunscreen back on throughout the day or I will take a sunscreen stick and reapply it with that throughout the day. But let's say I'm going to an outdoor concert with a bunch of my girlfriends and I'm wearing a full face of makeup like I am right now. I wish I was the type of person that would pull out my lotion sunscreen, maybe use a beauty blender and really get it in there or get a great sunscreen stick and just wipe it all over my face and make sure my skin is fully protected but I'm not that type of person. I don't want to mess up my makeup. So my options in that situation are do nothing or do something that isn't perfect. And so I choose the do something that isn't perfect. Sunscreen sprays and sunscreen powders are the something that isn't perfect. So I picked this one up because it's mineral, it's fragrance free, and it comes with a brush. This one isn't terrible, but it's not great. It's very messy, so I feel like this goes from zero to 60 really quickly. There's nothing on the brush and then you shake it a few times and then all of a sudden it is everywhere. So it's just kind of finicky to use, which most of these are not super easy to use, but I found this one to be especially messy. Um, and I prefer the Hawaiian Tropic one over this one and that one's cheaper. Now the thing with the Hawaiian Tropic one is that it does have like that Hawaiian Tropic smell. So if that really bothers you, I would say you could still use this. I just like the Hawaiian Tropic one better. And now for a sunscreen spray, I have tried so many of these and they either are too greasy, they burn my eyes, they ruin my makeup, something is wrong with them. The only one I remember loving is the Neutrogena one that was discontinued. It was that ultra fine Neutrogena mist that came in like that white and blue bottle, loved it. I was looking for something similar where it's that really fine mist that does not ruin your makeup, it's not too greasy, it doesn't burn your eyes, and I found this one. It's a little bit pricier, but it's the best. And it's the Vacation Super Spritz SPF 50 Face Mist. I shared this on Instagram yesterday or the day before, and it's sold out on Ulta's website, but I found it on Aries' website, surprisingly, and Anthropology's. So I'll look and see if I can find it in stock anywhere and link it down below. You can also sign up on the wait list for Ulta's for a restock. Um, but this is water resistant for 80 minutes. It is incredibly fine. The mist is incredibly fine. And so if I'm in, going back to our concert scenario, if I am at a concert and I want to just do a little bit of a retouch after a couple of hours, I'll take this spray, I'll generously apply it on my neck, on my shoulders, all over my face, and then I'll take my Hawaiian Tropic SPF powder and I'll powder on top of the mist. And that does two things. It adds to the protection and it helps remattify my makeup. So I have found that that two-step process gives me some added protection and it doesn't affect my makeup. If anything, my makeup looks a little better because I've repowdered. So love, love, love this. All right, next up is a product that I purchased when we were at the beach. While I was actually there, I Amazoned this. It was an overnight prime to our Airbnb. Kind of like the shaving cream. There are some caveats. It's not a perfect product, but I used it a lot. So my hair is naturally wavy and frizzy. Like if I'm in humidity, it's like whew, goes crazy. So when I'm at the beach, it is just a complete waste of time for me to blow dry, straighten and curl my hair. Complete waste of time. It looks terrible within two hours. So the whole time I was at the beach, I wore my hair in like a low pony like this, but then I would have these stick ups right here and my usual measures were not working. I have a little frizz um, mascara looking product that I use typically when I'm home but that was not gonna fly at the beach. So I bought this. This is the Bedhead Hair Stick. 
and this is like literally glue for your hair. So this is gonna give you that like slicked back look, really glue down those flyaways. Um, but again, it's gonna give you that slicked back look. It's not gonna be like subtle. You're gonna have to commit to the slick ponytail all the way down and use a smoothing brush. But if you do that, it will not budge. I felt like I looked so much more put together with my hair like that than when it's just everywhere. But the things that I wanna point out are number one, the packaging. I think it's pretty terrible. It's got like this push up right here where you push the product up and then you can apply it. And then you're kind of stuck like, okay, well, do I just put this top on and push it down? Do I use my finger and get my fingers all sticky? I wish it had like a twisty thing so I don't have to deal with the product being stuck like this. I typically just push it down with the top and then the top gets all messy. So don't love the packaging, number one. Number two, you have to be careful when you use this because it is like glue. So if you just like push really hard, you will pull your hair out. So you have to like very gently and slowly apply this. These are two lessons I learned the hard way, obviously. Um, but if you use it properly, if you can deal with the packaging, it really does wonder. Frizz hair at the beach, or I've also been using it when my hair is greasy and dirty, it needs to be washed, but I don't have time to wash it. I'll do that low pony or low bun and slick it back with a smoothing brush and then make sure that everything is in place with this basically glue stick for your hair. And next up is a brow gel. This is the Ulta Beauty brand brow gel. I bought it, I saw this on TikTok. Um, I don't know who it was, somebody recommended this. Um, it has a really tiny little brush and they were saying that it kept their brows completely in place for the entire day. I have thick hair on my brows. I also have hair that grows down. So I feel like I'm a perfect candidate to test these brow gels because my hair is like fighting the brow gel. I feel like this is a very wet formula. A lot goes on and my brows, like when I push this through my brows, they get pushed up and then they just fall right back down. Once it dries, Yes, the my brows stay exactly where they fell after I applied it, and you can feel that, the, that it's pretty firm, but they don't go where I want them to go. And this one is just too wet of a formula. It just weighs my brows down and exacerbates my problem, which is my brow hair points down. So unfortunately, this one was a fail for me. All right, and then last but not least are a pair of linen pants. I'll see if I can insert a video clip. I bought them from Target, and I have been wearing them nonstop. I am 5'9", and they are long enough for me, which is never the case. They're high-waisted, they have a drawstring that ties them shut. I wore them the whole time we were at the beach. They're just the perfect summer pant at an affordable price point, and I truly cannot stop wearing them. And number two is a summer shoe. So feet problems run in my family. My grandmother has bunions, my mother has plantar fasciitis, I'm probably saying that wrong. Um, but both of them have said, whatever you do, wear supportive shoes. So in the summer, I was always bad about wearing flip-flops, but my feet have been starting to hurt lately. And so I am like, you know what? No more flip-flops. I am wearing supportive shoes this summer. I picked up some Birkenstocks from Nordstrom and I know Birkenstocks can be really expensive. I think they're like $150, but these are the waterproof ones. So they're like a rubbery waterproof material and they're, I wanna say $40, $50, much more affordable than the regular Birkenstocks, but they have that arch support. Your feet have enough room. They're a lot more supportive than regular flip-flops. I actually showed them to my podiatrist and he was like, I'm gonna start recommending these to everyone. This is what people need to be wearing instead of flip-flops. He said the worst shoe you can wear for your feet is flip-flops. So I have switched to these. So when I'm just taking my kids to the park and I'm wearing athletic clothes and I don't wanna wear sneakers, I'll throw those on. When we're going to the pool, when we're at the beach, it's, it was literally all that I wore. I have them in white and I kinda wanna get another color. So, so I feel like this is probably a very niche part of my audience, but if you have feet problems or if you are looking for more supportive shoes for the summer than flip-flops, I highly, highly recommend the Birkenstocks, the waterproof ones. They're very comfortable, roomy, and they have the arch support and you can tighten them as much as you want. So random, but when I thought about what have I genuinely been loving this month, those two popped immediately in my mind. So let me know in the comments what you guys have been loving this month. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one.